Alabama and its home opener. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. A week after dispatching the Florida State Seminoles, the Crimson Tide returned home as the number one team. And for the first time, they take on the Fresno State Bulldogs out of the Mountain West. From Brian Denny, Adam Amin, Anthony Beck, Rocky Boyman as well. A win over Florida State a week ago. How do you synopsize what you saw from the Tide? Well, number one, physicality is there. They want to set an identity, especially in this football game. The run attack, get Jalen Hurts a little more in the passing game. I'd like to see them open it up today against Fresno State. It was an impressive performance on the ground a week ago for this Alabama bunch. Alabama won the toss and they want the ball first. So we'll see Hertz and the tied offense on the field here at home to start their Bryant Denny Stadium slate. Jimmy Camacho will kick away for the Bulldogs. Mistimed to start. Any type of trickery here? No trickery. Short kick. And it's grabbed by Trayvon Diggs, who's got an alley. It gets closed down across the 25 yard line. Jaron Bryant on the tackle. Jaron Bryant, rather. So Jalen Hurts against Florida State last week, less than 100 yards passing. 55 yards on the ground. The sophomore out of Houston, Texas, handles this offense. Dangerous runner, Adam. This guy is elusive in the pocket. Effective passer. Brian Dable working him, getting him more effective, and he protects the ball. He will not turn it over. Really been the key since he started here last year. Damian Harris starts in the backfield with Jalen Hurts. On first down, it's Cam Sims. And Cam Sims with an excellent play on the screen pass out across the 40-yard line. He'll pick up 18. 6'5", 214 pounds. And listen, this Fresno State defense on the outside, the corners, they're going to be on the off coverage. You'll see they're going to be off. It's going to be an automatic check outside of the run game. They're going to throw right to receivers, let playmakers make plays. Hurts. With good blocking in front of him. And there goes Jalen Hurts. Hurts towards the pylon. And he is in for a touchdown. Question is, was he in a fantastic run? And you see the speed down the field. Let's watch his feet. Left one in, right foot coming down. Hard to see with that. One guy taking a camera <laughs> shot right there, Adam. Hard to tell from that one. See if we can get this view. The ruling on the field of touchdown is under further review. Anthony, from initial look, he looked like he was inbounds the entire way to me. Yeah, it looks like it. And I don't see anything from a visual on those two camera angles we can see it out this actually might be the best shot and again his foot's in his right foot looks in number two covers up the body a bit so I think this is going to stand this is a, a heck of a start Adam to come out the gates we talked about the run game this is how you set the tone for Alabama a 55 yard run for Jalen Hurts for what would be his first rushing touchdown of the season Another look at it here. This might be our best shot at it. Yep, that left step is in. That right step looks to be inside. I see green grass. I agree. Right before the pylon, and he gets that left foot. Looks good to me, Adam. We'll see yeah. how they, they roll this one. And I don't think there's anything After to overturn. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Confirmed as a 55-yarder. Alabama's on the board 39 seconds in. Andy Papanastas for the kick. Yeah. 
What a start for Jalen Hurts and this Alabama offense. He may be the best tailback on this team. When the holes are that big, you better find a way to catch him. This kid's got speed down the sidelines, making it look easy early. Touchdown, Alabama. on the ESPN app. Download now and take ESPN everywhere. You can probably check out the highlight of Jalen Hurts on the ESPN app right now. 39 seconds in, big hole for Jalen Hurts. Yeah, we're going to keep our eyes on three guys. The tight end, Henches, is going to come around and seal it. And then these two receivers right here make some great blocks on the outside. And this is the physicality we're talking about. They can go inside, outside. Look at the receivers in the tight end, all meshed up on their blocks right here. And then, bam, Jalen Hurts. All he has to do is turn the afterburners on. Adam, he's got that. Check him out. Four guys he completely runs by. Excellent play by that young man. J.K. Scott with the kick. Jante O'Neal the knee. And Adnan Burke in the studio. Hello, Adnan. Thanks very much, A.V. So here is Fresno State with Chasen Virgil, a four-year starter in high school, replaced Travon Boykin at West Mesquite High School in Texas, a one-time Mississippi State commit. Yeah, he's a starter last year, sophomore. He's a pocket passer. His maturity level's been questioned. That's the biggest thing for him coming into the season. And will he be mobile? Likes to stay in the pocket, but it'll be tough versus this Alabama defense. Empty on first down, and underneath to Keyshawn Johnson, one of their top targets across the 25. Rocky Boyman, tell me about this Alabama defense. Yeah, a lot going on for the defense here today. Last week, they lose three guys decimated by injuries, but we talked to the coaching staff yesterday. Rather than change their philosophy up, they're going to have an audition. It's audition day in Tuscaloosa, where we see a variety of different faces. Some inside backers will move to outside, and some will be outside guys. Not a lot was really accounted for here coming into the season. We'll get a look at them today. Yeah, some younger guys are going to change positions a little bit as well as they move around on this Alabama defense. Rashawn Evans injured against Florida State. Christian Miller and Terrell Lewis are done for the year. Anthony Jennings with an ankle injury. So here are some of the guys you're going to hear their names maybe for the first time. Yeah, right there, number 16, Jamie Lee Mosley, number 42, Holcomb. These are two players right now, the stand-up guys, the movable pieces. Christopher Allen, number four, a true freshman will be in the mix also. Big third down and short. Looks like Fresno State wants to open this up a bit, spread out this Alabama defense. Virgil's protected, looking for Rice, his tight end, and a little bit off target on that toss incomplete and it's fourth down the one thing you watched the film last week with fresno state virgil was a little inconsistent threw the ball over his receivers in a couple wide open opportunities right there a wide open crossing route underneath to his tight end wasn't able to lock in again these are plays that this team has to have if they want to have success against alabama's defense 66 to nothing a week ago for fresno state but alabama is not incarnate word they are not <laughs> Blake Cusick will punch under pressure. Got rid of it, but it's going to be pretty good field position for Alabama on the other side. Explosive run for Jalen Hurts for a score last time he touched it. ESPN College Football, brought to you by the Lexus High Performance Line. Experience amazing. And Mobile One Annual Protection. Proven protection for one full year. Pageantry and tradition abound here at Bryant-Denny Stadium, where they've been playing football since 1929. Home opener for the number one Alabama Crimson Tide and an excellent start 
the last time they touched it with a 55-yard Jalen Hurts run for a score. This drive starts from the 38 with a Hurts pass and a catch for Calvin Ridley and a toss to Adnan Burke in the studio. And set for a big All-American final out in Flushing. Damian Harris on the screen. Excellent pursuit by this Fresno State defense. Nathan Madsen with that initial penetration blew up the play. One of their better players, number 91, four-year starter. And you'll see he'll just read this. Sees the back on the outside. Damian Harris is a good back, but nice adjustment on the tackle. Swarm on the defense. Nice play to get these guys back on third and long for Fresno State. He has played nose, he's played and versatile veteran up front for the Bulldogs. Blitz from Fresno State. Hertz runs against it. And Hertz has the first down into Fresno State territory to the 45. 17 yards. Well, they bought pressure up the middle. The problem is, is when you bring pressure, it may open up some gaps. Jalen Hurts is very instinctive when it comes to finding those holes and getting up to the field. Getting nine or ten yards on third down is not an, e is an easy chore for this young man. Harris on the move. Close to a first down. Those of you on ESPN News, number one, Alabama. Already on top seven to nothing in its first meeting with Fresno State. Adam Amin, Anthony Beck, Rocky Boyman, our great crew, and Nick Saban, fresh off a win against Florida State, paces the sidelines at home for the first time this year. On second and short, on the perimeter at Sims, he's got a first down. Yeah, and you know, a lot of Alabama fans are saying, hey, well, you got to start throwing the ball down the field more. But it's hard when Fresno State's defensive backs are given about six to ten yards of cushion. But also on the third down run play there, again, a lot of fans want to see him put that ball up in the air. But, man, what a weapon to have a running quarterback. Everyone's all covered up and can pick up that first down with his legs. Bo Scarborough in the backfield. There goes Bo. Rocky, when we see Jalen Hurts on the field, I know there were some struggles throwing the ball downfield, but if you're Fresno State's defense, how would you want to play against these talented receivers on the perimeter that Hurts can use? No, absolutely. And look, I can just tell you as a former defensive player, uh, the, the guy that gives me nightmares at night is a running quarterback because you can have everybody covered up, but he still finds a way to squirt through. So I know a lot of folks want to see him throw the ball downfield more, but man, when you have that kind of weapon with your legs, it is tough to beat. One on one, looking for Ridley, incomplete. And honestly, to be with this defense of Fresno State and any defense, I would force Jalen to throw the football. Get a little tighter in coverage. You don't have to be super tight, but pack the box in, stop the run, and force him to beat you with his arm. I think the biggest thing right now that he's trying to grow in is his passer in this offense. He's got some new concepts with Brian Dable being the new offensive coordinator, but I still see some struggles with him to be a passer and an effective passer in the college game. Third and three, Hurts trying to make something happen. Good penetration up front by Jeffrey Allison. Might be the most important player today for Fresno State's defense. He is number nine. He's 250 pounds, but he's six foot. This guy is a collider. He likes to run into guys. I'm waiting for him to go up the middle and hit Bo Scarsborough one-on-one. -on -one. That could be something to watch. So Off offense still on the field, A.B. Yeah, this is an opportunity. Big guys up front and Scarbo in the back. Tough to, to, to stop a big guy in the backfield like this. The drive, the push, initially looks like enough. That's great surge by the offensive line. Center, Bozeman, Cotton at the right guard. 
Pierce Baker on the left guard. You get behind those guys. The one thing they do well is their masters. When they can come off the ball, it makes it easy for these backs. There is Brian Dable, 42 years of age, back to college after 17 years in the NFL. Solid debut last week, but when he talked to our crew this week, plenty to make improvements on. Tenth play of this Alabama drive is a Hale Hentges touchdown. Well, if you want to raise your completion percentage, I always say throw them to tight end, Adam. I, I, I didn't know that. You, did you play tight end or something like that, A.B.? I, I was just I know it's not my regular crew, so I don't know everything about it. I you. did take a couple snaps, and, and Brian <laughs> Dable had some good tight ends with the Patriots over the years, and Gronkowski and Martellus Bennett last year. He will utilize that position, wide open pass for these bam. Papanastas makes it 14 to nothing. You mentioned it. He was Rob Gronkowski's tight end coach. Tight ends are big with Brian Dable. Yeah, and again, it's just where is the defender who's taking the tight end? They don't throw the ball much to Hentges in this offense. He's primarily a, a big outside of the end blocker, and he gets an opportunity. And again, moving the ball around, finding multiple weapons. I mean, listen, they got four or five star receivers all over the place. Who's going to guard the tight end? That's the question. So you get him involved, just another piece to add on to these defenses, how to figure out how to stop this team. You know, A.B., for Jalen Hurts, this is the first time since the SEC championship game and the college football playoff semifinal that he's had the same offensive coordinator in two straight games. Yeah, he's had several right now. Lane Kiffin, obviously, last year. You had Sarkeesian come in, uh, who, who stepped in when, when Kiffin left. And then now Brian Dable. I mean, again, this kid is getting different kind of points of views. The one thing I will say about Brian Dable, he brings a NFL philosophy. He worked with quarterbacks that had to make real reads, real uh, pass concepts. He's going to learn those things, and that will dramatically upgrade his quarterback skills. The question is, will those teachings and those different things that he brings to the table, will Jalen be able to pick those things up and become more of a passer? But it's a great start, six for seven, 50 yards passing, five different receiver. He's spreading around, and of course, the 75 yards rushing is impressive. DeJounte O'Neal takes it out for Fresno State and takes it to the 21-yard line. Jason, you guys had an outstanding game out at Ames, Iowa. What a performance in that fourth quarter. What a back and forth ball game. Here it's the home opener for the number one team in the country. Jalen Hurts and the Crimson Tide off to a fantastic start. Hurts with a score on the ground and a score through the air. And the outmatched Fresno State Bulldogs go back to work for their third offensive series. On the move, it's Keyshawn Johnson, the top target for Fresno State, out to the 37-yard line. How do we get to 14-0? Well, they use it with the legs of the quarterback. Jalen Hurts with nobody around him, sticks his foot in the ground, and goes all the way down the field and makes a great run and runs by everyone on the Florida, excuse me, the Fresno State defense. And then the pass. When all the receivers are covered, find the guy they forget about, the tight end, Henches with the big grab, nobody around him to cover. Nice start by this Bama offense. Adam Amin, Anthony Beck, Rocky Boyman, first meeting all time between Alabama and Fresno State. And it's Chasen Virgil at quarterback for Fresno State here. Way off target, looking for Damari Scott. Halfway through the first quarter, Jalen Hurts, 74 on the ground, 50 through the air, and a couple of scores. Yeah, you want to see him develop game every play everything he does Brian Dable working hard to get him right he's worked on his footwork his timing his release his ball flight all of those things come together to help improve his football game and Nick Saban look he, he demands him to become a better passer and he wants him to be more of a complete quarterback but his instincts running the ball are phenomenal Virgil looking underneath for Ronnie Rivers 
That will bring up third down. Rocky, one of the big storylines is the injury front for the Alabama defense. Yeah, and as we talked about earlier, a lot of different phases we'll see try to maybe show out and take over that role for, for pass rusher. But I'll tell you what, if you're going to have injuries anywhere at the linebacker spot, you'd rather have it be outside linebacker because inside linebacker, a much tougher position to play, in my opinion. you got to read tackles and pulling guards and things like that. If you're on the outside, it's, hey, baby, just go get the quarterback and hold that edge. That's what Jeremy Pruitt told us this week. Virgil finds Scott, but short of the sticks. And that'll bring up fourth down. There is a penalty marker thrown from the far side of the field. Levi Wallace, who had his first career pick last week with the stop. Substitution infraction, 12 players on defense. Five-yard penalty, replay third down. Nick Saban looked like he was trying to get the attention of the referees, hoping for a timeout. I wonder if some of the substitutions, some of the second and third string guys taking a step up has to do with something like that. Well, that'll be key, and you see his frustration on the sideline. Again, all 12, we got 12 players on the field. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So again, that's something you have when you have some young guys rolling in. Nick tried to take care of it on the sidelines, but weren't able to get it. And that's an advantage for this Fresno team, who quite honestly has been doing well, moving the ball effectively, getting at least to the 50-yard line, trying to assess something on offense. A lot of movement on both sides. Isaiah Bugs had penetrated the neutral zone. Jason Virgil was trying to make a play or a, a check to the play rather. And normally when the defender steps in early, the offensive lineman, if they quickly react to it, they can get that call. It wasn't initially flagged. Interesting to see how they go with this one. Offside, number 49 defense in the neutral zone, causing a reaction by the offense. The five-yard penalty results in a first down. It was third down and five, so a free first down for the Bulldogs. Yeah, Isaiah Bugs is a junior. He's going to be right here, and he's going to basically move forward. And, and usually the offensive lineman, and he did make an initial move. So, again, if you're past the line of scrimmage and you move as, a, as an interior lineman, they're going to get that. It's a nice call. Gives a first down to Fresno State. Ronnie Rivers. The true freshman from Brentwood muscles his way to the Alabama 48. Jason Virgil was a four-year starter at West Mesquite High School in Texas. He replaced Travon Boykin as the quarterback at West Mesquite. At one time, a Mississippi State commit, but Mississippi State wanted him to gray shirt, and Virgil didn't want to do that. He's a very competitive guy, so he found Fresno State, a place where he could get a chance to play relatively quickly. Now his second year as the starter for the Bulldogs. Screen for Scott. And a first down for Damori Scott. And more. Staying in bounds into the red zone. Love the play design. Jeff Tepper is a wizard when it comes to the offensive scheme. They get the ball out quick, get a nice block. Again, get the ball in the playmaker's hands. Scott's one of those guys, fifth year senior. They're going to move. You see a lot of movement, multiple sets, and the, the obviously the pace has been picked up now for Fresno. Rivers stacked up inside the 15-yard line. You mentioned Jeff Tedford. He has roots at Fresno State, a longtime assistant, excellent offensive mind and quarterback coach, and now taking over as the head coach of the Fresno State Bulldogs. Longtime head man for the Cal Bears. Yeah, I think it's a great hire. Remember, when he went to Cal 2002, the year before they were 1-10, in 10, he turned that program around. These guys think they're in good shape with him at the helm now. Josh Hokett, who had a productive week one, takes it close to the sticks inside the 10. It's a nice push right up the middle. Their captain at the center position, number 77, Aaron Mitchell. Mitchell, he's the guy that is the emotional heartbeat. He makes all the calls at the line of scrimmage. He is the second quarterback of this football team. And again, lots of personnel sets. They're rolling it around. They definitely think their best playmaker is number three on the outside. He's right on the bottom of your screen. If they can get a matchup with him, 
One on one. Deshaun Johnson at the bottom of the formation. Virgil, will he make it? No. He had Jamie Mosley stepping into that Jack linebacker spot today, hounding him and spying him. Fourth down. Looked like a little confusion offensively. Weren't quite sure the formation setting up the play. They tried to do a heavy play action, but again, well done by Fresno State getting that drive together. Hopefully they can get some points out of it on this field goal opportunity. They have a Lou Groza semifinalist on their roster. That's not Jimmy Camacho. He beat out Cody Croning for the kicking job this fall. From 27, he gets the Bulldogs on the board. Solid drive for Fresno State. Still within 11 for Jeff Tedford. Boy, Chris Kirk and Maria have a pretty good run, huh? A couple of top five games to start out their season on ABC tonight. Saturday night football, Oklahoma at the Horseshoe to take on Ohio State. 7.30 Eastern time on ABC and the ESPN app. This is Jeremy Pruitt, the defensive coordinator in his second season for Alabama, getting after his defense. Well, he told us yesterday in the meetings, he wanted to find out a little bit about this defense. He said last week it was easy to get up for Florida State. They were one of the best teams in the country. He said he found out so much last year in his second game against Western Kentucky when he shut them out. He wanted to see what kind of a performance they came out. Right now, not a great start to that quarter with that drive. Yeah, one of the things about Alabama's defense that makes them so good is they're so versatile and so multiple. They have, you know, traditionally Nick Saban has been a 3-4 defensive guy, but now even here today you're seeing four down linemen sets, sets to play against this spread. And the other thing you see is just guys play different positions, moving all over the place. Even Deshaun Hand will move from inside to outside. An outside linebacker will stand up on one play. He'll go down and do a three-point on another play. It's very, very confusing for an offensive line trying to find out who to block. They'll start this drive from the 25. With Damian Harris in the backfield. It's a misdirection, and Harris runs it for four. And another thing, too, Adam, you never want to give any momentum to the opposing team. You know, they came in here, big underdog, but they start feeling like they can do some positive things. They start changing their mentality. Right now, Alabama, in their normal situations, they just be who they are on offense and defense. It's usually enough against teams like Fresno State. Bulldogs are offsides. To the edge for Jerry Judy, his first career catch. The true freshman out of Louisiana. He's one of the highest recruited wide receivers in the nation last year. Again, another five-star stud that's on this Alabama roster. Offside, number nine defense. The penalties declined, result of the play is a first down. Beg your pardon, out of Florida, leave us in Louisiana a moment ago. They're hoping that he becomes the next great Alabama wide receiver. He's very close with Calvin Ridley, and they feel like Judy has the ability to be that next great receiver after Ridley. In the mold of an Amari Cooper. Harris gets hit by Allison. That's a matchup AB yeah. wanted to see. He's a big guy, 250 pounds, and I'll tell you, if you don't put a body on him, he'll inflict some pain on you. It's a heck of a kickout block by the right guard, Lester Cotton, but again, linebackers are there to fill, and again, you got to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and match the physicality of these guys for Alabama. You cannot let them push you around. You have to set the tempo, and if anybody can do it on this Fresno defense, it's number nine, Jeffrey Allison. Allison makes the tackle on Hurts, on, uh, to the 43-yard line. One thing Fresno State's defense has is they got four big-time, big-body defensive tackles that can clog up space, take up some double teams there, allows a big linebacker like Allison just to run around and make tackles. Yeah, again, you, anytime you can press the middle of the field, especially for a team like Bama who likes to run between the tackles, those run stoppers are important. Also keeping guys off the second level, the linebacker level. Bulldog blitz. Hurts finds Ridley. 
Calvin Ridley, the freshman All-American two years ago. He wants to pump those numbers back up to that freshman season when he broke Amari Cooper's record for a freshman season. Yeah, he's such a precise, precise right route, route runner. Watch on the bottom of your screen, come out of the break. Now watch as he gets separation because he runs so fast. Sell the fly route band, stick his foot on the ground. He Ooh. already had the DB turning like he was running down the sidelines. Just an excellent route by that young man. Underneath, it is Ridley tackled by Juju Hughes. Why is he an NFL wide receiver? Why is he ready for it? Well, he's smooth, number one, but he's explosive. He gets the ball in his hands. He can come down the field and make you pay. Precise routes we saw coming out of breaks, just getting separation on the technicalities and high game speed. When he sticks his foot on the ground, you better have a safety around him. If you don't, he will not be caught. Amari Cooper, fourth round draft pick. I think this kid's a top 10 pick. He might be the Amari Cooper 2.0. Here's Bo Scarborough trying to be the chain mover. And he'll take it to the 24-yard line, a first down. Junior out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Had that 53-yard touchdown a week ago. 171 catches. He's got a shot with a big year to get up near where Amari Cooper was. Some decent names on there. Julio, Julio Jones, Jones, you ever heard of that right. guy? He's pretty solid. Uh, I think he's uh, getting ready to play in Chicago after coming off an NFC championship. Falcons on the road tomorrow to take on the Bears. The confusion in the backfield. Jalen Hurts getting the protection set. Got to like that. Scarborough makes a man miss. Boy, he got James Bailey to dive at his legs and made a miss. Yeah, Bailey's 225, but, you know, for a running back his size, he's got some nice feet. Looks like that ankle is fully healed from last year's championship game, but I'll tell you, he brings a versatility and a changeup in the backfield very few college football teams have. Scarborough again, first down again. A strong first quarter. Here at home for the first time this season, the Alabama Crimson Tide on the doorstep of punching at home again. Jalen Hurts got it done early and often for Alabama. The running game getting going at the end of the first 15 minutes. Home opener for the number one team in the country in a 14-3 lead for the time. You're watching the SEC on ESPN from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Home opener at Bryant Denny Stadium for the Alabama Crimson Tide and a 14-3 lead. The inviting blue skies here in Tuscaloosa. It's going to look a little different in Death Valley tonight when Auburn comes to visit college football primetime presented by Hampton by Hilton. 13th ranked Auburn, third ranked Clemson. Jared Stidham, the toughest test and an early one in an Auburn uniform against that Clemson D. First down from the 12 for Alabama. Scarborough shifting. And Bo Scarborough close to the sticks. So strong, lower body strength, really just carries defenders on his legs. I mean, uh, this young man is unbelievable. Think about it. You got Damian Harris that comes in, speed, explosion, burst. And all of a sudden, they, after you're trying to catch him, now you got this big guy coming in. I I'll tell you, this is, a, this is a heck of a backfield. And add Jalen Hurts into the equation. Here he is. Touchdown. Jalen Hurts carving up this Fresno State defense early. Yeah, spreading out, get the look, get the back out of the backfield, but just don't forget the fact that you have a quarterback that is a very, very good runner. Easy touchdown for Bama. Papanastas on for the extra point. Jalen Hurts already with 172 total yards and three touchdowns. 
The young man can do it all, but the best attribute he brings is his legs, and he's making it simple right now versus Fresno State. Taco Bell is a proud partner of the college football playoff. Be on the lookout for Taco Bell student sections and passionate fans like these at games all season long. This ripping right into Anthony Beck's wardrobe. <laughs> Straight out of his closet. Hemming those pom-poms together, that's always a good look. <laughs> Hounds tooth abound here in Tuscaloosa on this first home Saturday for the Crimson Tide. O'Neal out across the 15 with a flag on the field. Alabama's defense getting set to run back out there after we saw Jeremy Pruitt lay into him after Fresno State's field goal on their last. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 87 return team. Half the distance to the goal for the spot of the foul. First down. Only made tougher for Fresno State, pinned deep against this Alabama defense. Guys, so versatile, especially when we look at Minka Fitzpatrick. And that's what you love about Minka Fitzpatrick. In baseball, they talk about a five-tool player. That's basically what Fitzpatrick is. He does everything well. He can blitz. He can cover in the slot. He can cover out wide. He can protect the middle of the field. He can play an in-box linebacker. It's very rare you have a guy with his kind of versatility, but not just versatile, but does all of those things at a very, very high level. He is a film rat, a guy that is moving around that movable piece. He's right over the slot right here. Again, he'll be in the slot like Rocky said, or he'll be blitzing off the edge. Good tackle made on Ronnie Rivers by Keith Holcomb. Close to a first down, though, for Fresno State. What I think is amazing about Fitzpatrick, too, is just how seamlessly he can transition from, hey, you're a nickelback this play, next play you're blitzing, the following play you're out wide covering a number one wide receiver. I mean, it's very, very tough, and he manages all that very well. And I'll tell you also, Rocky, when you're down some linebackers and you got pieces and he's movable and can go anywhere, that really does help a coordinator make it easy and transition for other players. Rivers has the first down. Hit hard on that perimeter by Ronnie Harrison. Good penetration initially by Bugs to force him to the outside. And that's one thing you'll get from every one of these defensive backs out of Alabama. They're great tacklers, textbook hitters, and they're always in the mix and around the football. Again, it's 11 guys always flying. You're never going to miss a guy out of place. Very few times you see these guys in the wrong spots. Spreading it out on first down. Virgil way off target for Johnson. Second down coming up. And again, Virgil's not a guy that wants to run the ball. You saw him earlier run the football, not very comfortable getting outside the pocket. I like the game plan, the quick passing game. Try to mix some runs in, really pull out some of these defenders for Alabama. Let them see the field. If there's off coverage, get the ball out of his hands. Again, tight coverage on that last play, making it tough, though, for him to release the ball to an open receiver. Scott underneath. Harrison made the initial contact, and then Minka Fitzpatrick right on cue, Rocky, to make the stop. And he probably would have been in even better shape there, but he got picked by his own guy, by Hamilton, in the middle. But the other thing, just a, a, an added thing you see out of Fitzpatrick, you see him constantly communicating out there, talking to the other secondary players, getting a linebacker lined up, talking to the defensive front as well. Just, I mean, what a perfect thing a coach wants out there, an extra voice. Alabama mixing up the coverage here, Adam. They just make a change, see if they can get one off. Bringing heat late. Underneath a first down for Rice. 
Jared Rice, the tight end, taken down by Wallace, but that moves the sticks for the Bulldogs. That's some maturity by the quarterback there. He saw some pressure, looks outside. We got a man down for Alabama. Looks like Levi Wallace, who had an outstanding game last week against Florida State. Nick Saban with some concern for the senior from Tucson. <laughs> Levi Wallace with a great game against Florida State seemingly took an eye to the face on that last play. Yeah, number 16, watch the big, the left thumb right in the face mask right mm. there. Man, Oof. Wallace credit still holding on for life, bringing the big man down, but that's got to hurt when you take it Paul to the face. Anthony Avery checks in at cornerback for Wallace. A fresh set of downs for Fresno. Scott, typically a receiver running out of the backfield, and Ronnie Harrison one of those future NFL defensive players for this Crimson Tide defense on the stop. One of the things you see Fresno State doing, attacking the perimeter, but that's, they're going to have tough sled in doing that because of the speed on Alabama's defense. That's exactly what Nick Saban wants. He doesn't want anything going up the middle, force everything to the perimeter, and run it down with five-star speed. Virgil and that double move incomplete Rocky I would imagine even when you have younger guys stepping into the defense maybe their eyes might go to the wrong spot but the speed is going to be there regardless yeah speed there's no no exception for it absolutely not yeah because you can make a mistake but if you have speed you can recover especially a defensive back maybe your coverage isn't fundamentally exactly sound but you got that speed to recover there's absolutely no substitute for it which that's why when it comes to recruiting that's the first thing these coaches look for high snap Virgil trying to recover it Still loose and recovered by David Patterson, the right tackle. Back near the 20 yard line. Definitely not the scenario on a third down. Trying to be on top of it. Very fortunate to get this one back. Virgil looks like he may have gotten injured on that hit there, but again, snaps way over his head, tries to pull it down. A lot of speed, guys jumping on top of him. They get the ball back, so at least they can punt it away. On the move, Diggs. And they'll start this series in Fresno State territory. Will the tie? Virgil getting tended to on the sidelines. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Marriott. The Marriott portfolio has 30 brands in over 110 countries. And the all-new Mazda CX-5. Driving matters. The renovated tunnel here at Bryant-Denny Stadium featuring the years of the four national titles that Nick Saban has won. To win titles in college football, you got to recruit. And that's exactly what Nick Saban has done. Jalen Hurts here in the first half on the sidelines. It's the much-anticipated debut of the freshman from Hawaii, Tua Tungo-Vailoa. First Alabama pass is a completion to Robert Foster, close to a first down. Early enrollee came in January to the Crimson Tide, tabbed as the next Marcus Mariota. How about that for a billing? I'll tell you, and he is a natural passer. Talk to Chris Wanky, who's on this staff. He said he's the most accurate quarterback he's seen as a freshman all throughout practice. Now, he has to do it in the game, but this kid can wing the ball. You'll see the winding motion. Interesting passer, but he can definitely throw it. Another catch for Ridley. It's a first down as we check in with Chris Cotter. Revenge on the mind of the Nittany Lions after that loss to Pitt last year may have kept them out of the playoff. 
Tonga Vailoa under pressure. Still on his feet, but ends up eating it back behind the 40-yard line. Allison with the stop. This is when Tua came out for his first series. Guess who comes over? Jalen Hurts. Jalen's such a great leader. He wants him to have success, and you know, Tua's going to come in here and get his chances. Coach Saban talked about he would get some opportunities for a lot of different players. Jalen Hurts obviously leaving, having a tremendous game. He might not be done, but it looks like he's going to be sitting on the side for a while. So let's see what this young freshman can bring to the table for Alabama. Najee Harris on the move. Jeffrey Allison, another tackle. Tua Tungo Vailoa comes from St. Louis High School. It is the same high school as Marcus Mariota, but that place is a quarterback factory. Timmy Chang, Jeremiah Masoli. They've got players on the other side of the ball, Tyson Alualu. That is a great high school to come out of. That already gives you a small indication of this kid's talent. And then you see everything that you've read, yeah, you've heard, that we've heard from coaches about this young man. High, high ceiling. And Nick Saban will go anywhere to find a recruit, <laughs> even man. Hawaii, yep. across the Pacific Ocean. Third and 15. Slinging it, a little short, incomplete, fourth down. So for you scouting fans, here's what Tua did in high school. This guy can, can sling it and he can run it. Yeah, again, accuracy, getting the ball to his playmaker's hands. He wants to stay in the pocket. He's a lefty now. It's a little different animal. But again, he throws that ball with precision. He's got great arc on his ball. And again, can make all the passes in the tree. And they really like what they see out of him in practice. Again, first time on the field. Big stage here at Bam, but he's going to get his chances at the quarterback position. Early instruction from Nick Saban. J.K. Scott will punt. First punt of the day. Trying to pin Ronnie Rivers and does at the seven. Timeout. Tua Tungo Vailoa talking with Brian Dable, the offensive coordinator, and with Jalen Hurts on the sideline after Tua's first career series. 21-3, Alabama on top. Let's take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by Capital One. Yeah, you know, I'll be honest with you, Adam. I think me and Rocky have no question in Alabama's number two, but I'll say this. I like Penn State. I have them in my top five as number two. I, I think they're as good as any team in the Big Ten. Saquon Barkley, McSorley looked outstanding uh, last week, and they're off to a great start against Pitt. And then that Oklahoma-Ohio State game will, will shed some light on a lot of the teams. Anthony, I'm not going to argue with you on Penn State, certainly, but I'll tell you the most impressive team to me last week was Michigan. They look fast. They look angry. They look big. I mean, it's, it's not your grandfather's Michigan team out there, right? They're a, certainly Jim Harbaugh has brought a different caliber of kid to that program, and, man, they look good last week. They've done a really good job in recruiting. You got to see Rashawn Gary do some work. A lot of these guys that were highly touted a couple of years ago making serious impact. Virgil underneath, and it's Keyshawn Johnson for a first down. Let's check in with Chris Cotter. What's up, CeCe? Interesting. After what we saw last week. Offense not necessarily the issue last week though for Texas. It was the defense giving up 51 to Maryland. Next week Texas goes on the road to take on the USC Trojans. Good play by Damari Scott close to the sticks. Well, Scott's done a nice job on the outside. It's a good block by number 33. Uh, hook it out on the on the perimeter there by the running back. But again Fresno's shown some signs that they can get some playmakers in space and make some plays. They've made some yards. Again, finishing is going to be the issue against Bama, especially 
Adam, when you're coming back and you got to go 85, 80 yards down the field to put those plays together, that's the challenge versus Bama's defense. Virgil, good catch by Kyle Rittering, the tight end. He's got the first down out to the 40-yard line in front of Hootie Jones. Yeah, he's very fortunate here because when you're running the crossing route, you got to make sure you see what's in front of the receiver. Here he throws it to him, and there's literally a Bama player standing right there. He's able to kind of get the ball behind him right there. You want to sit down if you're the tight end. Again, gets the ball in a position where they can make a play and they're able to move the chains. Seven first downs now. Anthony, it's not a bad sign. Moving the ball a little bit for this Fresno State team. Rivers. Took him about three. Nice play by Duran Payne on the interior for Alabama against the true freshman Rivers. One thing about Deron Payne, as big and massive as he is, last week you watched that game, he played 50 of 58 snaps. Not bad for a 310-pound man out there getting it done. Super stout. I mean, literally, he gets his paws on you. He locks you out and bench presses you behind into the backfield. He's one of those big guys. You know, you look at number 99, Rakeem, uh, Rakeem Davis also. He's 6'8", 300-plus pounds. So they got some big boys inside. Setting up that bubble screen, and Johnson able to break a tackle. Ends up getting forced out by Payne to set up third down. And, and Anthony, I'll tell you what, to me, the hardest players to find in the country are those big and athletic defensive tackles. You look at the top defenses in the country, though, Ohio State, Clemson, and here at Alabama, they're able to find those guys that aren't growing on trees out there. And what a tremendous asset they are to a defense to have that power, stoutness inside, but still be able to rush the pass as well. You see how he was moving laterally? That was really impressive. He's nimble. Woo. Keyshawn Johnson looked at him and ran the other way. Smart <laughs> man. Virgil under pressure. Throwing it deep. Diving attempt by Jameer Jordan, but could not corral it. Great effort by the junior, but in tight space, couldn't get it. Yeah, to do a full 180. Excellent concentration. Just wasn't able to pull it down. Defenders right on top of him. But again, flushing the quarterback out of the pocket. Virgil's not a guy uh, that wants to have that kind of pressure. Dylan Moses, number eight. A true freshman able to get that pressure to push him outside. Blake Cusick punts away. And out of bounds at the 16-yard line. 344 to play. Jalen Hurts does have his helmet back on. Will it be Jalen? Will it be Tua? They've both seen action in the first half. Week one is upon us, our annual Monday Night Football doubleheader. Adrian Peterson's the number two back for the Saints, going up against his former club, the Vikings, at 655. New head coach, Vance Joseph, for the Denver Broncos in that vaunted D against the, let me say it, Los Angeles Chargers. Shout out, Beth Moens, 10-15 Eastern time on ESPN, starting with Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's at 5 Eastern. We saw Jalen Hurts and Tua Tungo by low on the sidelines playing catch, loosening each other up as Jalen Hurts is going to take the field. I love this early relationship that we're seeing between these two. Oh, they're both young players and they both have a lot to learn in this new offensive system so they can basically do it together with Brian Dable, the offensive coordinator. Design quarterback run. First down on the quarterback run on a gain of 10. By the way, if you were curious why the ball was spotted at the 23 that time, when we went to break, they spotted it at the 16, but there was contact by a Fresno State gunner before that ball went out of bounds. That's why the ball was spotted further up on the field. He's been flawless today, Adam. 10 for 11, 91 yards. Now, we haven't seen the deep ball. We haven't seen him work down the field. Maybe we'll get a couple plays here early on to his receiver, favorite receiver on the bottom, Calvin Ridley. Looking right there. Jaron Bryant on the stop. 
What have you seen so far, A.B.? Well, his legs, number one, will kill any team in college football. He's able to make that one-step cut and give you that speed up the sideline. Nice ball here, wide open, tight end. Getting that, and then again, with his legs. Defenses have to account for him all over the football field, and it really does take away a lot of the different things you can do on defense because he's so versatile. Foster on the sweep into Fresno State territory to the 46. Just watching Jalen Hurts and the day he's having, I just think you got to be very careful to try to not make Jalen Hurts someone he isn't. I know everyone wants him to be better at the downfield pass game, but you try to make someone they're not, it usually doesn't end well. Right now, he is a very accurate quarterback. He takes care of the football, and he can pick up, make explosive plays with his legs. You start tinkering with him too much, you change the person, the player that he is. Hurts on the move. Another great run for Jalen Hurts inside the 20-yard line down to the 18. Uh, and, and Rocky's right. I mean, this player is so dynamic with his legs. It really is simple to him as a runner in the backfield. And, you know, this is just a simple quarterback power. And nobody's around him. So you can get 20-yard chunks many different ways. Adams with his legs in the pass. He does have to grow as a passer. There's no question. There's a lot of open receivers versus Florida State. But this football team... Definitely has done well with him. How about the speed of Ridley inside the 10-yard line? Running another jet sweep for him. First and goal, Bama. And you're starting to see the different facets of Brian Dable's offense. You run the quarterback lead. You get the quick pass to the receiver. You get a nice reverse. Then you bring one the other way. Again, just trying to mix it up, keep this defense running. See a couple guys with their hands on their hips. If Fresno State continues to get tired running sideline to sideline, that's when they'll start chomping at you inside the tackles and making plays. Harris with the cut and the push for the touchdown. There's an expectation level, Adam, across the board for all the guys that block, especially receivers. Freeze it. Look on the outside. He's going to come up. Great block by Cam Sims. And this is the difference between a lot of teams is will you go out there and everybody do their job? And that's the one thing Nick Saban, Brian Dable, they keep everyone accountable, and they expect that kind of level of play from everyone on offense and defense. 28-3 Alabama. Chris Cotter in the studio. What's up, C? Thanks very much, CC. Looking forward to it. We'll see you in 75 seconds of game time. AB, I want to go back to something that Rocky talked about. You don't want to turn Jalen Hurts into something he's not. I know there is a lot on his plate, but at the same time, this is still the guy that made the play at the end of the national championship game to put Alabama in position to win it. He's the guy that went 13-1 and as a starter a year ago. It isn't broken for Jalen Hurts. I know it's been a little rocky the last four games, but it's not broken for this guy. There's no doubt. I mean, it's, the sky's the limit for him, but I think there's a, a certain threshold where he kind of peaks out as a passer. You know, the one thing Brian Dable can bring to the table is just give him a little more focus on pre-snap reads. Seeing the defense, understanding what the concept is. A lot of their pass routes, almost all of them, are past concepts that he can learn and understand and read coverages, and that'll be the biggest thing. First snap last year against USC, fumble. What did he do after that? Pretty good. This is the play we were just referring to in the title game. And let's be honest, guys, clearly the Alabama offense likes that dual threat kind of quarterback. Look at the first string quarterback, Jalen Hurst, and look at the backup, Tunga Viola. He's a, he's a dual threat running sort of quarterback guy, too. So, look, if you want to have a drop back style quarterback, put him in the game. If you want a dual threat kind of guy, then that's the kind of player you're going to get. Don't expect much different. And it's good enough for him to get them to that national championship game. But if we look back, the two games they struggled, offensively 
wasn't the big pass place was against Washington and Clemson and a lot of passes were left on the table you needed to make some of those throws and Nick talk about that coach Saban in our meetings that was the difference ultimately for them to get over the hurdle get over the top and potentially win that next national championship so ultimately that, that's what it will come down to when those heavyweights play you look at their schedule they're going to get through it it's just a matter of can they make those extra explosive plays to take them over the top Fresno State driving with Ronnie Rivers on the ground final 30 seconds of the half and Anthony to your point I talked to a couple Alabama offensive coaches before the game and they said they gave Jalen Hurts a lot of Deshaun Watson film to watch in the offseason that's the kind of quarterback they want him to be what was Watson he could make plays with his legs but he hit open receivers he wasn't a guy throwing 50 yard bombs all day they just want him to be a little bit more uh, elaborate in the passing game hit those open guys you don't have to hit a ton of balls in the very very tight windows Just a field goal against Nick Saban's defense, and all the touchdowns came on Jalen Hurts' drives. Chris Cotter, Jonathan Vilma, Chip Kelly, so happy to toss it to you guys. Back in Tuscaloosa, you're watching the SEC on ESPN. Strong showing for the home fans for the first time in 2017. Top-ranked Alabama with a 28-3 lead at halftime. Adam Amin, Anthony Beck, Rocky Boyman with you so far. Your thoughts on what we saw in that first half? Well, I think, you know, just what we wanted to see, the passing game open up and the run game and all this. The one thing Brian Dable does is he sticks what, what works. And today, Jalen Hurts is what works for this Alabama offense. He's really done it all passing and running. So, again, that, that's the biggest thing is that no matter what they have to work on, they have to get the W. And that's ultimately the biggest thing for this Alabama football team. We saw Tua Tungo Vailoa in that first half for a series. I imagine if this score and margin remains what it is or increases, we'll see more of Tua Tungo Vailoa. Fresno State ball to start half number two. J.K. Scott gets us going. And a strong kick, a touchback. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Goes right back to what A.B. was talking about. Well, every time Jalen Hurts runs the ball, he averages 17 yards a carry. It's been easy for him today, and the blocking really has been spectacular inside and outside. But through the air, you're completing at a 92% clip, and you're able to get the ball to seven different receivers. Jalen Hurts showing a little bit of that vision today, improving himself. The yards aren't big, but he's been accurate and on to the right receiver today in the game. You never go broke taking a profit, right? I feel like Jalen. I feel like Jalen Hurts kind of epitomizes that. Well, Jason Virgil, a one-time Mississippi State commit, goes to work to start the half, and it is Damari Scott with the catch. And the one thing for this young quarterback is, look, you're down 28-3. You come out, you forget about the scoreboard, and you try to win the second half. And they go out there. They need to execute the exact same game plan they started with. They had some success on the quick passing game. They need to get it out of his hands quickly. And they need to run some mix play, mix some run plays in, keep this Alabama team spread out and on their heels. Scott again. And he's got the first down. You know, Jason Virgil does have a pretty good head coach if he wants to improve as a quarterback. Jeff Tedford is considered to be a quarterback guru of sorts. Yeah, I'll tell you, he's, he's had some very familiar quarterback names, starting with David Carr, former number one pick overall, then Achilles, uh, excuse me, Achilles Smith, Joey Harrington. I mean, the list goes on and on. Aaron Rodgers. Pretty good quarterback uh, right out. I mean, these guys have put it together and done it on the field. And not only has he had quarterbacks, but skill position players, J.J. Arrington, Javad Best, Marshawn Lynch, yep. Deshaun Jackson. So there's been some big-time names coming out of his offensive playbook. Flag thrown as Keyshawn Johnson got taken down by Minka Fitzpatrick. This may be a face mask penalty. Talked about Minka, Mr. Personal foul, face mask, number 29 defense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. You know, he's, he's everywhere on the field. He's been a lot of crossing routes. He's been in man-to-man -man coverage. 
And here he just gets his hand caught up, and yeah, he, he clearly pulls down number three, Keyshawn Johnson, by the face mask. Junior out of Old Bridge, New Jersey, tagged with the penalty, which sets up Fresno State in Alabama territory. Josh Hokett, who threw for a touchdown pass last week. Had a couple of short rushing touchdowns as well in a productive opener with a very short run. It's a walk-on who passed on a wrestling scholarship at Drexel. This guy was the California State Champion at 182 pounds. Tough kid, but ends up coming to Fresno State as a walk-on. Plays linebacker, fullback, running back, and hits the special teams. I love stories like that. And he can pass the ball, And he can too. pass the ball for 65 <laughs> yards and a touchdown. Underneath for Scott. Good hit from Sean Dion Hamilton, the SEC Defensive Player of the Week last week. And everyone knows the story of Sean Dion Hamilton, ACL injury last year in the SEC championship game. But how about that? Nine months later, he's back out on the field making a ton of plays. He stayed the whole month of May when a lot of the other players went back home. He wanted to get that rehab in, got a little bit lighter, and he makes a ton of explosive plays out there early in this season. Yeah, back and forth, sideline to sideline. You talked about he actually lost that weight. To me, he looks a lot faster. He's tired of people talking about his knee injury. He says, I'm good to go. I'm better than ever. Virgil for Rice through his hands. That's, a, that's nice protection up front. Virgil again, pocket passer. There was some room to run, but he lets the play develop, and he's getting a high five from Jeff Tefford because he likes his vision on this. Again, waiting for it, stepping up in the pocket. Look at the ball placement. He was stepping straight, but yet gets the ball out in front of the tight end's hands. You got to be able to pull that in if you're Jared Rice, unable to make that play. Crucial drop to get would have been a first down. Yeah, you said he led him into open territory. Blake Cusick to punt. Fair catch, Trayvon Diggs at the 10. Jalen Hurts had a fantastic first half. Looks like he's getting ready to take the field here in the second half. Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo on ABC and the ESPN app, 7.30 Eastern Time, number five, Oklahoma, number two, Ohio State. And they found a player to the Buckeyes in the backfield against Indiana. Yeah, new running back in town, J.K. Dobbins. I'll tell you what, he lit it up, 182 yards last week. Great jump cuts, shifting ability, able to see holes out in front of him, and nobody could catch him in this football game. This kid's a true freshman. He hadn't played a full game, Adam, since his junior year. He got hurt in the first play of the season, his senior year at LaGrange High School in Texas. He is going to be special for Ohio State. The thing to watch in that game tonight, the battle is Ohio State's defensive line versus Oklahoma's offensive line, arguably the best in the country. Rocky, I think that matchup of Nick Bosa against Brown <laughs> for right. Oklahoma, that's a scout's dream, I think. Well, it is, but here's the deal is you could argue if Ohio State's defensive line is the best, but I don't think there's no question they're the deepest. I mean, you yeah. talk about Hubbard, you talk about Tyquan Lewis, Draymond Jones from the inside, Jalen Holmes, Bosa. So I think you'll see tonight, they'll just keep bringing those fresh defensive ends. They'll see how long Orlando Brown can last. Second down and six for Jalen Hurts. I might need a pick for you, from you, Rocky, between Clemson's D-line and Ohio State's D-line as Harris takes it for a first down. You're mentioning Nick Bosa. Here he is, big boy. Yeah, but again, the thing is the depth last week versus Indiana, five sacks. Just keep rotating those guys in. It's, it's awful for an offensive lineman. You've played the whole game in that third and fourth quarter here, and here comes a fresh defensive end in the game. Clemson or Ohio State, who do you take right now defensive line, Rocky? Just because of the depth, Adam, I take Ohio State. Maybe man for man. I love Dexter Lawrence and Christian Wilkins, but man for man, I think uh, the depth-wise gives it to me for Ohio State. 
Hurts shifting for another first down to the 36. I don't know, Rocky. I know depth's important in college, but we both saw that Clemson defensive line. And those four starters, those defensive ends, Austin Bryant and uh, on the outside, are just incredibly long, got great length. And I think in this game versus Auburn, you're going to see a little bit about what they can do, especially against a quarterback that's not traditional Auburn-style guy. He's a passer. I think they're going to have some success. It's going to be a matchup uh, to definitely watch tonight. Yeah, that's on ESPN tonight at 7 Eastern time, Clemson and Auburn. Harris again, good hole, taken down by Malik Forrester. I think in that game for Auburn versus Clemson, no carry on Johnson. He had to hurt the hamstring last week. Petway will come back, but I'll tell you what, I'm still worried about that Auburn offensive line. Last week versus Georgia Southern, they gave up three sacks, and I want to say eight or nine plays behind the line of scrimmage. That's pretty tough when you have those big boys for Clemson coming in. Jared Stidham had, did, did a good job in the Big 12 in the starts that he had. He hadn't seen a defense like what he's going to see tonight, though. Not even close. It'll be a different story for him, and he'll have to be sharp, especially getting the ball out of his hands pre-snap read. He'll definitely be pressed as a quarterback at that position in that game. Hurts trying to step away from the pressure, keeps his feet, and nearly found Sims. Good job to avoid the sack, if nothing else. Third down as Nathan Madsen nearly brought down Jalen Hurts. Madsen, big guy. I mean, he's a plugger in the middle. But again, he goes, they do a little bit of a push and pull, and he's got great strength. They got pressure on the outside, and then Madsen's waiting for him inside. But again, Jalen Hurts stays composed, still is able to deliver the football. It was off, but he avoids a sack. Blitz picked up. First down. Did he lose the football, though? Calvin Ridley, it is going to be ruled down at midfield or incomplete? Incomplete. Ruling on the field is incomplete pass. Fourth down. There's a couple of questions here, and I wonder if they're going to take another look at this in the replay booth. Yeah, again, you got to have full, complete grasp of the football. And again, his knee's going down. He doesn't quite have the ball pulled in. It's bobbled. you got to complete the catch. Again, see the ball moving in the hand. His knee's down. Doesn't quite ever have it. Good call by the referees. I've talked to officials about this, replay officials and field officials. We don't want cheap fumbles. So there, I, I appreciate that particular call not to make it seem like there was possession and an easy fumble. No cheap fumbles is what a lot of officials will say. Ridley unable to haul it in. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Ram Trucks, America's longest lasting pickups. Home opener for Alabama today, and a 28-3 lead. Allstate is proud to be part of the team that comes together to do good by contributing to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. To date, Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. Fresno State starts this drive from its 11. Jordan Mims, the freshman, on the edge. Ronnie Harrison, one of those future NFL stars, is there. There's another one, Minka Fitzpatrick. We've been highlighting him a little bit today. So impressive, as Anthony called him, Mr. Versatility. Does so much for this team, does it on special teams. Only a couple of tackles today, but does a lot of the dirty work. Yeah, and that last play was over the tight end, and they immediately brought him to the middle of the field. So, you know, again, a lot of different alignments for him. They put a lot on his shoulders. But he embraced it, he loves it, and he's a special part of this defense. Virgil tosses, incomplete. Minka actually huddled up with Becton Boyman yesterday. Minka, you're a Jersey guy, Jets or Giants? I'm a Philly fan. Honestly. Philly? How you get to Philly? Uh, my father, he was a Philly fan his whole life, and I just kind of took it on. Nice. 
Most famous person in your phone. Go. Famous person in my phone? Like, in my contacts? Yeah. Or, uh, I got Deion Sanders. Yeah, I, I, That's I, pretty I like, good. I, I wish I had <laughs> prime time. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> all right, favorite coach on the staff? Uh, I like all the coaches. I can't, I can't, uh, I like can't say that. Smart I'm answer. <laughs> um, I guess maybe a, a guy you played with in high school that also plays college football. Uh, Brandon Wilbur. He plays for Notre Dame. Started for Notre Dame. Modern. There you go. Don't be a homer. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon Wimbush has a pretty big game tonight. Notre Dame and Georgia in a top 25 contest. I knew Rocky was smiling wide when he brought up Brandon. Oh, that was totally a setup. I, I knew the answer to that question before I answered, but I had to get it in. But it was great talking with Mick. And I'll tell you what, you just look around the top defenses in the country. That hybrid guy, you know, Jabril Peppers last year, Derwin James, that, that's the most important position player to have, a guy that can do so much for you. Blake Cusick with a booming punt to flip the field. Diggs from the 31. Returns it for 10 after a 54-yard punt. Minka Fitzpatrick, number five on Mel Kuyper's big board. He's going to be an NFL stud. Obviously, the score is kind of lopsided right now, but let's give some credit to Jeremy Allison today. Jeffrey Allison, rather, for this Fresno State defense. Defensive spotlight brought to you by Preston. He's been all over the field today. Yeah, you're right. He's our impact player, and he's been showing up. I mean, look, it's not easy to go around and tackle some of these big backs, but those are big-time collisions when you're going against guys like Bo Scarsborough. But again, he's been all over the field. He's attacking. He brings you heat, pressure, wraps up well. 12 tackles on the day. A quiet, big game by this young man. And just a sophomore, guys, what a better way to put yourself on the map than to come into Bryant St. Denny Stadium and have a day. Jeffrey Allison is from Miami originally out of Langston Hughes High School. So obviously some concern for his family over the course of this week, going all the way out to California to play his college football. Yeah, and you know, shout out to Tampa. I'm from the Tampa area. Yep. You know, my family, we got them out of Tampa. A lot of people right now hunkering down in, uh, inside the state of Florida and our prayers and wishing them well through this uh, hurricane season. And again, there's some thought that it might reach this part of the country, too, even creeping up into Atlanta, into Birmingham, into Macon, Georgia, as the weekend goes on and goes into early next week. So a lot of concern around the southeast in general right now. A lot of football games being canceled, which, by the way, is a tremendously no unimportant thing. Yeah. No but brainer. smart by a lot of these schools to say, you know what? We don't need to play this game this week. I don't care if we don't make it up. The safety's more important. Buccaneers and Dolphins were supposed to play tomorrow to yep. open up the NFL season. They scrapped it. I know it stinks to not have a bye week for those teams, but the safety of the players and their families and the staffs of those teams, far more important. First down for Hurts. He finds Irv Smith for his first career reception. Sophomore out of New Orleans takes it to the 38. So some ranked teams aren't going to play. USF, UConn, that's a conference game for a South Florida team that's picked to win that league. Yeah. Florida, Florida State, Miami will not play, nor will UCF hosting in Orlando. It's hard to make some of those games up. Some of them won't be playing for the season. They're just going to wipe it off the schedule and not play those games. First down again for Scarborough. Let's not forget, obviously, our friends in Houston and the surrounding areas were impacted by Hurricane Harvey. This is a Houston guy, Jalen Hurts, from Channel View High School. You see his armbands as well. He had the 713 on his armband for the area code for Houston. He had Pray for Houston on another armband last week. You saw when he was playing against Florida State. His family's home actually was one of the lucky ones. They managed to stay relatively dry and free of damage. They still had electricity for a good chunk of time when a lot of homes, a significant chunk of them, did not have electricity. So our best to Jalen Hurts and his community as well. Second down, lobbing it up there for Robert Foster. Intercepted. It will be ruled incomplete.
could not hold on to it. Jackson Finch nearly had it. The senior out of Modesto nearly picked off Hurts. Yeah, a little too much air on this pass here, and he eyeballs it. You see the safety running towards it. And again, just too much air on that. If he takes a little trajectory off that ball, he might be able to sneak it in. But seen and, and chased down well by the backup safety, Finch. But Anthony, that ball's got to be to the outside part of the field where if it is incomplete, it goes out of bounds. You cannot allow that inside re that receiver to come back where that safety can get to that ball. That's got to be outside part of the field. Late rusher. So Hurts runs against it. And Jalen Hurts slides smartly inside the 10-yard line. You could see that open up. A lot of coverage on that play and a lot of green grass and that's the one thing now the instincts we talked about you want to help imp increase his game as a passer but you don't want to take away this right here on the game 16 rushes 154 yards i mean that's a big day for a quarterback Harris unable to find space. Jalen Hurts a career day with 154 rushing yards. Pretty impressive stuff. I tell you what a luxury Alabama has and they have not one not two but three running backs in the 225 235 pound range in a day and age of college football where defenses are getting smaller and smaller having those big backs in the third and fourth quarter who what a weapon yeah. you're right yeah no doubt Harris down to about the two and a half yard line and remember, this is without Josh Jacobs, who did not play in week one against Florida State, nursing that hamstring injury. No real expectation of him to play today against Fresno State. The Fresno State player down, and Najee Harris out of California. Second running back in, in the nation by ESPN last year. Almost 8,000 yards, fourth most in California high school history, yep. Adam. This kid's a stud. Kasomi Mafi, junior college transfer out of Oakland, being tended to here in the third quarter. We'll step aside. ESPN coverage is streaming live on the ESPN app. Download now and take ESPN everywhere. Tough to see this. Kasomi Mafi needing help. Junior out of Oakland here. Just that tough plant. Yep. Gets overextended a bit there. And that's that's scary because it's almost considered to be a non-contact injury. That leg didn't have any contact on it. That scares you a little bit. Hopefully he'll be okay. Third down and goal. Najee Harris, and guess who, Jeffrey Allison, one of our hardest working players in this game, <laughs> by far. Stacking those tackles, he's a little gimpy, but he is tough. Talked about him, 250 pounds, and he's playing his lights out. And that's the thing that Coach Tedford said, just play hard, and he's an example of changing the culture. He continues, and that's those one-on-one -on -one combat hits you see him versus the running back and he takes the best of them there and i just talked about defenses getting smaller that doesn't apply to allison i still love seeing those 250 pound linebackers out there <laughs> I'm telling you man dying breed for sure they are certainly a lot about a lot about hybrids now it feels like more than anything else chip shot for andy papanastas but a flag thrown a lot of movement before the snap before the snap, Glengate offense. The clock was winding down. Not the worst penalty in the world to take. Actually makes the angle a little bit easier. You're not as tight to the goalposts. It's almost like you get a little bit more room to angle that in if you're Andy Papanastas, who went three for five against Florida State. Both of his misses were from beyond 40 yards.
The offense has put up 31 points today in its second game under Brian Dable, 42 years of age. He's been around, heavy NFL resume. Last time he was in college as a coach, he was a GA for Nick Saban at Michigan State for a couple of years. And then it was a 17 year run in the NFL, 11 of those seasons with the Patriots, obviously a lot of success. How has he brought that Patriots offense to college? Well, he, he's all about different situational looks and packages here. We got two tight ends and the slot on the top. Last week versus Florida State, they're gonna run a heavy outside zone play, work this team on defense, get that power run game going. Then they're gonna flip it around. Again, first and 10 against Florida State. Double tight end, slot on the bottom. They're gonna run a full fake. We've seen this before. Tight end is wide open. Now they had a protection breakdown, but again, that play design is very familiar. Let's go to the Patriots. Two tight ends. <laughs> now the slot's a little tighter, but here's the old Tom Brady full fake, and the tight ends just run wide open. That's the sprinkle of the Patriots offense that he brings, a pro-style uh, mixture and the spread that Jalen Hurts knows now and able to kind of intertwine it together to really make this offense true. Well, I tell you what, Anthony, again, a guy that someone's played against the Patriots probably five or six times, their versatility and how many things they throw at you it really, really pops out. I always say their game plan was whatever it takes to beat you that particular week. If you wanted to, if it was the zone run game they thought could beat you, they would do that. If it was going five wide and throwing the ball around the park, they would do that. And you see a little bit of that same kind of flavor out of Brian Dave. Well, the first question I asked him when we had our meeting, I said, how many hours did you, Coach Belichick, Willie McGinn, and Vrabel sit down and try to shut me down my rookie year with the Jets. He obviously said, you know, about five minutes. But other than that, he definitely brings a, a different mindset and really true, true pass concepts that Jalen Hurts can grow and understand and really nurture with to help him with the passing game. And one thing Nick Saban said yesterday, his best attribute is he makes concepts so simple for these offensive guys. You know, you know how it is, Anthony. A lot of coaches, they can they know everything, but they can't translate that to the players. The best coaches, in my opinion, are the ones that keep it simple and have that ability to connect with the players and get that sort of technique taught to them. And with what comes with concepts, Rocky, is that all the receivers can learn the concept. Now they're interchangeable. And then you look at how deep they are, six, seven deep with all these young players. If they know all the positions, now they can play more. That's what the coaching staff was emphasizing, the fact that those concepts have helped these young players learn and get on the field quicker. He shot Johnson with a first down here for Fresno State. Brian. To, oh, go ahead, Brian. I'm, I'm sorry, to your point, Anthony, the thing about versatility, too, is when you have injuries, now you don't have to scramble around and say, oh, we need a number one wide receiver. Oh, well, this guy's played number one. He's played in slot. He's played out of the backfield. He's done a little bit of everything. So injuries, every team has them. But if you can just interchange guys in, it makes it much, much easier. Deep drop for Virgil here. Go back underneath. DeJounte O'Neal hit by Averett. Brian Dable, by the way, has five kids with his wife, Beth. They are expecting number six wow. tomorrow. <laughs> so Brian Dable is going to finish off this game. Six kids. And oh my God. He's going to get right back to Beth and make sure that she is okay as they get ready for baby number six. I got a hard enough time with a niece and a nephew. They're not even mine. Virgil. Oh, that was Minka Fitzpatrick in the area. Potentially there for a pick, which takes us to the end of quarter number three. Impressive performance from the Alabama offense today. Jalen Hurts, a career high, 154 rushing yards today. A couple of scores on the ground, one through the air. An efficient home opener thus far through three. Back in Tuscaloosa, you're watching the SEC on ESPN. Start of the fourth quarter here at Bryant-Denny Stadium. And a 31-3 Alabama lead. A third down and five for the Fresno State Bulldogs. 
blitz from Fitzpatrick. Virgil gets rid of it into a tight window. Jameer Jordan took a shot. What a catch. Talk about ultimate concentration. I, I'm been, I'll tell you, I've been impressed by Fresno State overall. Yeah. They have not been scared. This is great job in the pocket. Look at his throw. That's a nice grab. And that's a big hit on the outside. That focus and being able to hold on to that ball, that's amazing. Yeah, Levi Wallace wasn't holding back on that hit. Give a lot of credit to Jameer Jordan for holding on to that ball. Coach Tedford talked about it. He had to change everything about Fresno State. Toughness. This team won one game last year, and he just said, we got to get tougher, more physical. We got to grow. We got to teach. He, he's got to get to know these guys. He's got to build trust. And you can already see signs of that turnover and change. I think once they get back to conference play, Adam, things will change for this team, and they'll be good. Incomplete. Looking for Keyshawn Johnson. Keith Holcomb was in coverage. Aaron Mitchell trying to settle things down. There was a little bit of a scrap there between Joshua Frazier and Natani Muti, the redshirt freshman. Anthony, you got to give this Fresno State offensive line some credit here. You look back last week, Florida State, DeAndre Francois was getting hit in the mouth virtually every play. But so far today, Virgil kept pretty clean. Yeah, you're right. Aaron Mitchell, the center, 77. You see him pointing out everybody on defense. The offensive line as a whole, only two TFLs versus Alabama. That's impressive. Out of the backfield to hoke it. He gets stacked up near midfield. You, know, you were talking about Aaron Mitchell, the captain of that front for Fresno State. Senior out of San Diego, 26th career start, the son of an Oklahoma Sooner. He had a great quote this week. People were asking him, oh man, what's that going to be like? Tough game, Alabama. He goes, are you kidding me? I'm going to tell my kids about playing in front of 100,000 people in Tuscaloosa. I've been waiting for this ever since we found out we were playing in Alabama. And think about it. It's a resume builder, right? You get to go against some of the best D linemen, really show out and do a great job. It's a great opportunity for him. I'm glad he embraced this opportunity against his team. Very cool stuff from Aaron Mitchell. There's a penalty marker thrown. May have picked it up here. Yep, official just went over, picked up the penalty flag. Good to hear from Aaron Mitchell when he was talking about this game earlier this week, the captain of the front. Just a quick look at Jalen Hurts' passing chart. Obviously, intermediate passing, deep ball passing was a point of improvement he was looking for. Yeah, you're right. I mean, he spread the ball around. They got a lot of playmakers at him. Eight different receivers touched the ball today and again I think they just want them to feel comfortable delivering the ball finding different players yeah they want to get some big plays down the field they're going to create some of those things but it wasn't needed in this football game but it will be needed moving forward at some point in one of these big SEC football games in the conference play to a tungo by Loa is back in at quarterback Najee Harris still on his feet out to the 23 yard line what a strong run from the 227-pound true freshman. Oh, Marshawn Lynch-esque right there. A lot of defensive SEC players bouncing games. off this guy. Hard to tackle, thick legs, one, two, three, four. He just, and then he applies the hit on one of those defenders. Batman now over 250 yards rushing on the day. Pretty impressive. Yep. Right back to him. Best run of Najee Harris's young Alabama career out near midfield. And guys, that's what I was talking about earlier. Here it is now, the fourth quarter. You've been tackling all day against 235-pound running backs. It's just punishing. These defenders, you can tell they don't want any of number 22 right now. That was a great block by the center, Bozeman. Again, one of the leaders on this offensive line. And Again, this offensive line for Alabama is trying to mesh, get better. They needed to improve. Coaches talked about they needed to get a little better from last week's performance, and they've definitely showed that today. Nice play by Jaron Bryant for a tackle for loss. Sophomore out of Fort Worth, Texas.
They've given up over 250 yards rushing, but I think overall they've played tough today. They haven't given up. They've shown good effort. That's always something to build off of, and I think, you know, when you watch this tape back as a staff for Fresno State, they'll be happy about what they see from some other players. Irv Smith in space brought down by James Bailey, a junior out of Austin, Texas. So, Anthony, Tonga Vailoa, left-handed quarterback. I want your thoughts. Is it truly different catching a ball from a right-handed quarterback than a left-handed quarterback? I say it is. Yeah, you know, sometimes it can be, depending on how tight his spiral is. I played with Chris Sims in Tampa Bay when I was there with the Buccaneers, and his ball would tail slightly. So when it came out of his hands, you get a kind of a different tail movement on his ball and you had to track it a little differently and of course coming from the other side again just finding the football out of his hands so again from what I've seen from Tua he's very accurate he's got a very tight spiral and I think you know ball placements everything with this kid and he's shown that he can deliver a, a nice pass to his players. Now do you think it's harder though going from a right hander in Jalen Hurts then to a left hander in, in, in Tua and then back and forth for these receivers? Yeah, I say in a game for sure you're you're definitely you're going to get a guy number one that that has a strength of rolling to the left where Jalen would normally roll to the right so there's an advantage so you would flip a lot of those run plays you normally would run to the left hand side when he's in the game and I love how Jalen Hurts goes over to to a Tungo Vailoa and immediately wants to talk with him hey what did you see hey I, you can do this better you can do that better obviously we don't know the conversation but it feels like that with the leadership ability of Jalen Hurts J.K. Scott, great kick once again. Ronnie Rivers, fair catch. Ten to play, fourth quarter. Alabama on top. Annual Monday Night Football Week 1 doubleheader. Saints and Vikings, a beautiful U.S. Bank Stadium at 6.55 Eastern Time. Chargers and Broncos at 10.15 Eastern Time. Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's started up at 5 Eastern. And that nightcap will be called by our friends Beth Moens and Rex Ryan. Not my seat in this booth. I'm just keeping it warm for my sister Beth Moens. Uh, this is her typical crew on Saturdays. I know you guys just love working with her. I talked uh, talk with Rex last week. Total pro. That's the easiest way to describe Beth, and I'm just happy to be a colleague of hers. Yeah, she's been my partner for three years. I mean, she truly is one of the best in the business. I'm so happy for her that she's getting this opportunity to work on that Monday Night Football broadcast. But I will say this. Don't get too comfortable, Rex. <laughs> Don't get too comfortable. She's mine. She's on mine. i got to have her back. You've done a great job, man. I love working with you, and uh, can't wait to have my good friend Beth back in the booth with us soon. Second woman in the history of broadcasting to call an NFL game, the first in 30 years. But who cares? That's just a pro. She's going to kill it on Monday night. We're excited to see that Monday. Thanks to Ben Hogg and Michael Ireland and the rest of this fantastic crew letting me slip in for a day. And I'll tell you what, this is just my second year working with Beth. The thing that impresses me about her is just, I mean, total workaholic, right? Always, there's games, how many games she call a year? 80? I mean, she approaches each and every one with the utmost preparation. Very impressive for someone of her status. Well, we uh, call the Women's College World Series together. I get to see her prep firsthand. Total pro, and like I said, this family, she's my big sister. So looking forward to it, BMO. Johnny Dwight, good play. Second down and 18 coming up here for Fresno State. One sack on each side. You said it for the most part today, Anthony. This offensive line for Fresno State really doing a strong, solid job. I know the score doesn't reflect that, but they've done a really good job. Yeah, a lot to look forward to. Again, you know, Fresno State's much improved. This offense was bare bottom last year. All of a sudden now you see... Like, some good players, some playmakers, some guys that can catch the ball. Young tailbacks, tailbacks, a lot of good players. And this offensive line is good. You know, I think offensive line play is going to be pretty important in this one, especially for Oklahoma against Ohio State. Fifth-ranked Sooners, second-ranked Buckeyes, 7.30 Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app tonight. I'll tell you what, everyone right now seems to be worried about Ohio State's secondary. They seem to forget they had three guys taken in the first round, but I know Denzel Ward and those guys, I'm, I know the athleticism they have. They'll be around quick. 
Well, I'm curious to see how Baker Mayfield's going to look tonight. Anthony Averett with the interception. And he's inside the 10-yard line. First career pick for the redshirt senior. And for Jason Virgil, his first mistake of the day, he's been clean throughout a lot of short passing in this football game. But again, the athleticism on the outside. Here's Averett. Watch him in the man coverage. His eyes are inside. And he's just going to jump right in front of us and under underthrown ball because that safety was in position and really tricked Virgil on this play ends up throwing it short that's the first turnover by either team in this game well played across the board but it's only a matter of time right last year Alabama seemed to have a turnover every single week Adam and there they get one in the fourth quarter but nice play by that young man a senior getting his first pick ever Go find him that football. I'm sure he wants to get that taken home. Yeah, I don't doubt it. That's a turnover, by the way, in 29 straight games for Alabama's defense. Harris trying to stretch to the edge and forced out of bounds by Johnny Johnson Jr. The stable is deep yep. at this running back. It, think about it. You know, Josh Jacobs hasn't even played yet. He's got a little hamstring. They're trying to hold him back. Uh, a sophomore. But again, you're talking about Harris. Uh, both Harris and Scarborough. They even have another true freshman, Brian Robinson, that's going to get some plays in this season. So again, there's just so many weapons to come at defenses with. Fungo by Lowell. Through the hands of Najee Harris. Irv Smith, the tight end, was in the area. Uh, Tonga Bailoa denied his first career touchdown in a Bama uniform. Yeah. I'll tell you what, he put a little too much mustard on that pass. I thought he could have taken a little bit off. There wasn't quite as much defense around him there. Maybe a little anxious there to try to get his first touchdown. You know, Rocky, the reason why he did, I think the back went the wrong way. The tight end was supposed to run that out route. He looked like he went and talked to Najee, telling him go the other way on that pass. And, again, you like that out of a true freshman, too, guiding some of those players on the field. Tungo Vailoa to the end zone and incomplete looking for Jerry Judy. You know, you guys were talking about it. I want to see it. What do you guys see? Yeah, you'll see two. You'll see the receiver, or the tight end coming across. Freezer right there. I think the back's supposed to go here, and then you have the wide open tight end. Here you get two guys in the same area. Look at, you see him kind of oh, jogging right. a little bit. Yep. He wasn't sure where he was, and there's two. He Look, you're going the wrong way. Get the other side. I love it. A true freshman coming in, coaching these players up. You don't see a lot of that. That's some of the, maybe that Marcus Mariota in this kid. This kid's going to be a good one. Again, learning also with Jalen Hurts. Twenty-two yarder from Papanastas is good. Thirty-four three, Alabama on top. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary with Alabama on top, thirty-four to three. He's been impressive. 154 yards rushing, 128 yards passing. Every time they ran a play today, 7.3 yards. That's impressive. And, you know, listen, Jason Virgil coming in to a hostile environment against arguably one of the better defenses in the country. He held his own today. I think so, too. I mean, that, turn, that, that interception he threw, that was late in the game. Everything else, you know, he had a couple drop balls today. So I think when they go back and watch this tape, they're really going to like what they see. But this was the Jalen Hurts show today for Alabama. J.K. Scott, ball coming off the tee. Fresno State's going to get another test, by the way, next week. Going to another playoff team's home stadium. We'll see the Washington Huskies wow. next week. How about that for back-to-back? -back? One of the toughest two-game stretches for any team in college football this year. By far. I think metrically it's the fourth toughest two-game stretch for any team in the country this year. Damari Scott. Trying to beat J.K. Scott. Cutting it back. Great return inside the 40. Keith Holcomb finally brought him down. 
Well, let's take a look at today's hardest working player brought to you by Duluth. You mentioned him, Jalen Hurts, doing it on the ground and in the air. He's been impressive, breakaway speed, finding open receivers, locking into his eyes to the guys that are open in this game. He's been a terror with his feet. I mean, that's the number one thing. It's the weapon that makes him the biggest challenge at, at the quarterback position in the country, I think. And as he learns and gets better at passing the ball, and really it's not passing. It has nothing to do with his mechanics or his, his technique. It's just pre-snap read and then filtering the defense when it gets into his drop back. He has to see it. He has to trust it, and he has to deliver it on time before his natural instincts of just running the ball when it's not there early come into play. Incomplete, looking for Jameer Jordan. Hit put on him. I think what you just said right there, Anthony, trust. That's a great word, trust in his eyes. They talk about that with linebackers a lot. And when you see it, you got to trust your eyes and hit it. Same thing for a quarterback like Jalen Hurts. That guy's open, you got to deliver the ball to him right now. He's definitely got the weapons for it. Sims and Ridley and Foster and some of these young cats coming in this season. Like Judy and Smith and Ruggs. Well, it's a relatively easy schedule, relatively easy schedule for Alabama. One of their toughest games is going to be against Auburn this yeah. year, part of the Iron Bowl. You're going to get a good look. If you're an Alabama fan, you haven't really got a chance to look at Auburn because you were watching your game last week. Watch tonight on ESPN. See how Auburn reacts going into one of the toughest environments in college football in Death Valley, 7 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Death Valley will be rocking in that football game. And again, a very, very challenging defense. Jarrett Stidham will get his first opportunity of what it feels like to go against the real deal. That'll be Clemson's day. We'll set up the rest of your college football Saturday on the other side. Time out, Fresno. It was given the name Death Valley for a reason. Good luck escaping alive. Jared Stidham against Kelly Bryant. You guys got to look at him last week in his first start. He was impressive. Now, you talk about a guy that can run. He's a 4-4 guy. Got a lot of speed. Now, this is a big challenge for him going against Auburn's defense. But he showed he could throw the ball. That was in the first quarter. He dropped a dime to Deion Kane. 236 yards passing, a touchdown interception, 77 yards rushing, and a touchdown. He had a big performance. I'll tell you the one thing I'm interested to see about Kelly Bryant today, though, is how does he respond to adversity? He didn't really, wasn't really put in any situations last week where he had to bounce back. He will tonight. That Auburn defense is pretty good. So if he throws a pick or he has a bunch of three and outs, how does he respond and bounce back? That'll be the key to how good of a quarterback he, he will be. And, Rocky, you, you remember, they, they're nine deep at the receiver position, four deep at the running back position. So be a distributor in that game. Don't go out there and try to beat the shot. Watson. Darian Grimm with a great grab on a very nice ball from Chase and Virgil. Touchdown Bulldogs. He's basically going to run a fade inside, get some turn, and this is a beautifully thrown ball by Virgil. Good concentration. Look, there's not a lot of open areas here as far as windows to get that ball. That's tight coverage by Carter on the outside. But again, this team has not stopped. They've played hard. Jeff Tedford will be happy about his kids' performance regardless of the score of this football game. That's going to be a really big confidence boost to this club. And to Darion Grimm, a sophomore out of Stockton, California, a junior college transfer who was originally enrolled at Nebraska. So this is a big time recruit, but he came back to California after spring practice in Lincoln. He wanted to be closer to, a, to home. He's a Stockton kid. And how about that for his first touchdown in a Fresno State uniform? The son of a pretty good one, Latif Grimm, an old pit wide receiver. Yeah, you know, I mean, listen, they got Jordan, number one, Keyshawn Johnson. We saw Scott, number eight, making some plays. Yep. Ronnie Rivers, you know, he's going to be a factor. He didn't get to run the ball much, but 
If you remember his dad, Ron Rivers, number two rusher all time in Fresno's history as a as a runner, running back in the in the early 90s. But again, this schedule is loaded. Look at this. So I'm I'm, I'm stealing your telestrator what here. Do you got? <laughs> 1.4 mil, and then this bad boy right here, <laughs> one mil. That's a pretty good two weeks, uh, three week, or yeah, two week stretch right there. That can buy a couple pairs of shoulder pads, right? <laughs> I had, to, I had to get one telestration I'll in today. You, I wanted good. to steal that one from you, big dog. I had to steal one from you. <laughs> but you know what? What I like about that, Jeff Tedford's team's going to get tested right away. And then next year, Minnesota and UCLA on the schedule. They're going to go to Westwood. At USC in 2019. At Colorado and at Tex Texas A&M in 2020. At Oregon and at UCLA in 2021. I like it. And I think Jeff Tedford, even though he didn't schedule those games, I think he's going to embrace those games. I talked to former head coach of Fresno State, Pat Hill, who does their broadcast, and he really likes what Jeff Tedford's brought to the table. And I'll tell you what, Jeff Tedford was, uh, was on the staff as an analyst for the Huskies last year. He'll have some, uh, you know, some things to, to bring to the That's table right. in that football game. There's Pat Hill right there. He came and said hello to us before the game today. This guy loves football. Yep. He still wishes he's part of it, but he likes being part of their broadcasting uh, with, with the Fresno State team. And he was a legend here for this football team for a long time. And Paul Leffler, our buddy as well, on a radio call. Najee Harris stacked up. Now, Mountain West, by the way, is no joke. And you and I got a chance to see some good teams last year. You and I got to see Wyoming, New Mexico. I saw Boise up close. It's an improving conference. They got to go to San Diego State, which is always a tough game. That's the defending Mountain West champ. They have to go to Wyoming in November. And then they close with Boise at home. So this is not going to be an easy run for Fresno State. It might be a season of growing pains. But if they can knock off one of those teams, man, that's going to give them a lot of confidence. Speaking of confidence, Nashi Harris bringing it in his home debut for the tie. I like his toughness. He runs the ball hard. He's got a little Marshawn Lynch in him yep. when he runs the football. Not only does he deflect the defenders, he also puts his body into them. And you got to like that hard running style him again. These backs for this football team, they're deep. They all have a certain talent that's unique and really, really good against some of these defenses they'll play. Haven't seen much of that yet. Wanted to see it from Tua Tungo-Vailoa, the read and then the run. He is the number one dual threat quarterback coming out of high school this past recruiting cycle. A lot of Marcus Mariota, as we said. When Tua was in fourth grade, he went to a camp at St. Louis High School and he walked away from the fourth grade campers and snuck in with the high school guys, including Marcus Mariota. All the players laughed at him, and the one guy who kind of kind of went, huh, interesting, <laughs> was Marcus. And Marcus kind of took Tua under his wing and really started to work with him, started to talk to him a little bit more, and that's how that relationship started, and that relationship has continued. And that's as good of a mentor as you're going to find, and by the way, one of the classiest human beings that's now playing in the NFL, Marcus Mariota. No question. Trent Secting, junior out of Katy, Texas, will get tended to here. Well, hopefully Trent is all right. While we have a moment, we'll bring it back in our broadcast booth here at Bryant-Denny Stadium, Adam Amin. Anthony Beck, Rocky Boyman with us as well. So we're kind of leading up to a big night in college football. Four yeah. huge games tonight, including Oklahoma, Ohio State, Stanford USC is going to play tonight, Notre Dame, Georgia, and then Auburn, Clemson. What sticks out to you? Well, you know, Ohio State, Oklahoma, we talked about the line, and, that, and that's a big part of it. But mm -hmm. listen, JT Barrett, who's coming off a game that honestly with that new Kevin Wilson offense, I wasn't. I didn't feel like he was real clear on what they were trying to do. I okay. saw a lot of open receivers. I thought his eyes weren't going to the right spots. And then Baker Mayfield, he only played a half. 
versus UTEP last week. So a really good half. There's a reason why because he's been. You know, when I see him playing the quarterback position, it's coming out of his hands. He knows where it's going to go. He feels good about that Lincoln Riley offense. I'll tell you, I really think that Oklahoma has a really good shot tonight on the road to potentially take this game. And you see the touchdowns that both of these guys have have had. I mean, th that's two of the best in college football as we speak. Nice toss by Tungle by Lower. He was able to find Xavier Marks for the long pass of 24 yards. Rocky, I know you, you're going to have an eye on your Irish tonight. What do you expect between Notre Dame and Georgia? That's a really interesting matchup. It, it really is. I'll tell you what, I was very impressed with Notre Dame last week. They had three guys go over 100 yards rushing. And Temple's defense last year was in the top 25 in rush defense. Love Brandon Wimbush. Certainly a faster quarterback than both Kaiser and Malik Zaire. So I think for them it's going to come down to that defense. And how does that continue to gel, that Mike Elko-led defense? Harris has the first down. And you know it's unfortunate. We had two very good quarterbacks go down to injury last week. Yeah. You know, uh, DeAndre Francois for Florida State. And for Georgia, J uh, Jacob Beeson, you know, he, he looked like he was taking strides to be really good. It would have been nice to see that team full strength. But Fromm's going to get his chance to go out there and try to lead Georgia. That's going to be a great matchup. Um, you know, I'd like to see if Notre Dame's back. I mean, I've been, I've been asking Rocky now. You know, <laughs> I've been waiting to see if the Irish can get it back. And Brian Kelly now, he's had a lot of success. You know, he's one bad year last year, but other than that, he's led that team to some really good records. Henry Ruggs, the freshman touchdown. First touchdown for the freshman from Montgomery, Alabama. Bama's got four five-star wide receivers on this football team. And again, just be a distributor, right? Two are just getting the ball into their hands. <laughs> when you got those five-star guys, you just let those guys make plays and let them make the big runs and the big catches. And that's a great job. It's a way to lead the team down the field. Tua is definitely prepared. He's been ready. And I think that's the biggest thing. And he's getting a hug by Brian Dable. And just, you know, just going out there and manufacturing plays within the offense. First touchdown for both Tua Bailoa and for Ruggs. A simple crossing route with a little play action. You come on the outside, you know, ball placement, but again, receivers in open spaces. You catch the ball, you get up the field. Again, I talked about it. he's a five-star wide receiver. Jalen Hurts is excited. Coaches are jumping around. It's been a fun night. To me, the most impressive throw was the one before that. He rolled out opposite his throwing arm, was still able to swing his upper body around and deliver a ball about 30 yards downfield. That was pretty impressive. Well, Tua impressed in the spring game. I think that's maybe part of the reason why there was so much talk early in the season. Well, you know, is, is Tua going to step in and take Jalen Hurts' job relatively early? Is he going to challenge him all season? Hey, if nothing else, you're going to have some healthy competition in practice. But he really had a great spring game, and that's why the hype was so high. This is the pass Rocky was talking about. Wow. Again, he's really cranking it there, trying to get his body. But the best thing about it is he, he gets that full turn, and he's able to throw that ball. But, I mean, it comes out a little interesting. You know, he's got kind of that wind-up of a throw, but gets a nice tight spiral, finds the open receiver, able to make a big play. I'll tell you what, Anthony, he winds up a little bit, but after, after that, that ball comes out of his hands surprisingly quickly, at least from my perspective down here. And it's got great velocity. It's humming. And I'm headed to D.C. tomorrow for Redskins Eagles. It's week one opening Sunday, which means Sunday NFL countdown presented by Snickers on ESPN. By the way, new start time here, 10 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN and the ESPN app. Our good buddy Sam Ponder stepping over to the NFL side, and she's got the full crew, including Rex Ryan, Charles Woodson, Matt Hasselbeck, Randy Moss, Morton Shefty with all the updated news for your team, maybe your fantasy team, that's at 10 a.m. Eastern time on ESPN. You got a fantasy team? I've got a few now. Now, did you, my inside, I had Kareem Hunt starting week one. Oh, yep. no, you didn't. Yes, did, I wait, did, did. Did you? Oh, my let, God. let me get my ESPN <laughs> app out. I'll show you. I'm telling you, I had him. He got me about 40-plus points, <laughs> me and my son. I told my son to pick him, and we had him on the starting lineup. Tunnel screen here for Damari Scott from Marcus McMarion, the transfer from Oregon State. He checks in for the final couple of minutes. Again, he came in late. They'd like him to come in and push uh, Virgil at the quarterback position, but 
again, you know, building the offense. You look at what Virgil did today. You know, he was inconsistent last week in that big blowout win they had. I thought he was much calmer, much more flowing with the offense. Again, you're going to be able to take a lot of things out of this tape, Adam, Coach Tepfer, the coordinators, and really show some good stuff. And I think that's what you got to do when you play Alabama. And that's going to help them when you play Washington next week. These teams should be calm, ready to go, and feel good about what they're doing. Well, this is a Pac-12 quarterback in Marcus McMarion, grad transfer. He announced his transfer last month in early August. That is really late to come into a program, but Jake Luton, who's a junior college kid, came in, won the starting job out in Oregon State, out in Corvallis. So this is a guy who's started six games, a lot of them in Pac-12 play. He's beaten Pac-12 opponents, had a win against Arizona, had a win against Oregon. This is a guy who's got some real experience now. He's got some skill. Nice run out near midfield. So I think you're right, Anthony. I think he's going to push Chase and Virgil, who had a pretty good day considering the defense he was going up against. And there's nothing wrong with pushing your starter. I mean, that's how you keep guys on their toes, constantly working. And he was a distributor today. Nothing down the field, nothing crazy. But he got the ball in the playmaker's hands. He took what Alabama's defense gave him, and he stayed out of harm's way in trouble. Congrats to the offensive line that did a spectacular yeah. job just protecting him, giving him a chance to try to do anything in the, in, in the backfield. And he performed well along with those guys. There's the true freshman Jordan Mims out of Palo Alto, California. Coach Tepper talked about Mims, a true freshman. Ronnie Rivers, number 20, a true freshman. They love these two backs. They want to build with these guys. And it comes to recruiting. It comes down to being creative on offense. Those are some things that Coach Tepper will bring to the table for, for Fresno State. Fresno State, you're going to love this, has as many yards as Florida State did last week against this Alabama defense. I'm well aware that the circumstances are different. You're playing some of the second string guys and third string guys. Yep. But these are second and third string guys that are four and five star recruits too. So really good effort here by Fresno State today. You said it. That's the key word, effort. They played hard. They continue to play hard. You know, it's like they never looked at the scoreboard in this game. They just go, did their thing, stuck with the game plan, didn't change, didn't get nervous, didn't try to catch and go throw the ball down the field and get big plays. They stayed within their offense and their defense tackled well for the most part. But again, Bama just too strong as far as their first, first team players. McMarion stepping up too tall second down well you mentioned it we've got a lot of good games tonight we're all headed to the airport I'm gonna have the ESPN app up in the car because <laughs> we got some games starting up in the next uh, few minutes here that we're gonna be wanting to keep our eyes on so you can take the app everywhere the car on the lawn if you're mowing it today maybe at an establishment where they serve some beverages you can watch some extra games that's on the ESPN app. You can download it right now. Do yourself a favor. I gotta try that. Mowing the lawn and checking my app. That that's, that's it's, a, you'll end up with a really funky, cool design in your lawn. That's a <laughs> that's a positive. No doubt. That's a good thing. A big hit on Josh Hokins. But he has a first down. About a minute. Putting a bow on this one. Alabama will move the 2-0. They've got Colorado State next week. Then they open up SEC play in Nashville against Vanderbilt, the team that they haven't lost to since 1984. They've got Ole Miss at home. They've got a good stretch at AM, Arkansas, Tennessee, LSU, but those last three are all here. So it is a relatively, again, I'm using that term very directly it's a relatively easy schedule for Alabama yeah I mean we don't know too much about these teams heading in we we think Auburn's going to be good but they're not to the end of the season rim tackle clock roll hit triple zeros and Nick Saban makes it 2-0 to start this season
That's now 66 straight wins for Alabama against unranked opponents since that loss 10 years ago to Louisiana Monroe. He rolled a lot of players in this game. That was his goal. He wanted to give a lot of looks, find some new pieces on defense at the linebacker position. Wasn't clean all the way through, but we do one, know one thing. They set an identity today, and it was behind this young man running the football. Down to Rocky. Coach, you guys put up 41 points on offense. Jalen had a big day. Did you see everything you wanted to see out of, see out of your offense today? Well, I think we played better. We wanted to execute better. I think we did. Are there things that we can improve on? Absolutely. I don't think we played as well on defense today. I think they did a good job of attacking us, you know, trying to keep the ball away from us and nickel diamond us quite a bit. But um, we just got to get better. It's an opportunity to improve. One of the storylines coming in was the outside linebacker position and trying to fill that. Did you see enough out of anybody in particular today about the pass rush moving forward? Well, I, I, I think they're going to learn a lot. You know, we got screens today where we didn't retrace. You know, we got quarterback draws where we didn't play draw sets. I mean, a lot of little things that I think, will, will, you know, this experience will be good for the players. Thanks, Coach. Thanks very much, Rocky. Nick Saban, never satisfied. Sounded like what you would expect after this performance, but a victory to get to 2-0 to start this season for Alabama. 41-10, to the final score for Anthony Beck, Rocky Boyman, the great crew here in Tuscaloosa. Thanks for letting me fill in. Adam, I mean, saying so long. South Carolina-Mizzou coming up. First, Chris Cotter, my man in the studio.